And some of you thought I wasn't going to address this. Of course I'm going to address this. It needs addressing, like a blank salad. So in order to do this, let's go back in time a bit and talk about when we first started hearing rumblings of this. And the rumblings were on some of your favorite forums, on some of your favorite websites. And I know sometimes here I give those websites a hard time. I just want to take a minute while I have you and say, it's not the websites. I actually know people that work for most of them. They're all gentlemen. It's some of the stuff that goes on inside the forum that I take issue with. But that's neither here nor there. Apparently somebody had a line on some source about an apparent masterpiece Bumblebee in the works. A second version, similar to what they had just recently done with Prime. I then went and looked at a few of my sources and I found a book that was released, a magazine overseas, like a Transformer magazine. I don't know the name of it. I'm sure you all have seen it. And inside of it, they had new images of MP44. And then afterward, they had pictures of a bunch of masterpieces they had already released. But most of those masterpieces were either new releases, recent releases, or repaints of older releases, the plus versions. But on the page right after MP44 was a giant picture of Bumblebee. Not the toy, but the cartoon image, which to me lent credence to the claims. It wasn't long after that that everybody saw a super fuzzy picture of a cartoon styled Bumblebee that looked like possibly the toy, but we couldn't really tell. And whoever took the picture took it with a flip phone, it looked like. But it wasn't long after that that we started seeing pictures of this Bumblebee. And the pictures that we got were interesting to me at the least. The very first picture I saw was kind of a three-quarter turn, which showed off most of his front view. And I thought at a glance, well, this looks good. Then I zoomed in. And as I zoomed in, I saw some things that went on in the face that I found unsightly, let's say. And then I saw some potential in the backpack for more unsightliness. But then I scrolled down and I got to them feet. So I continued scrolling. I saw a second picture, more of a profile shot, and I saw that backpack. And I was like, great, googa mooga. This looks worse than not only the original Bumblebee release, which had quite a backpack on him, but it also looks worse than X-Transbot's Toro, which also has quite the backpack on him. And it's junky, like a bunch of parts compiled on top of one another. I dare say worse than Fans Toys Hoodlum and worse than Takara Tomy's tracks. However, I think that for a second we have to take a minute and say, sometimes when we get early views of these figures, they're not as cleaned up as they could be. So it's not really fair to jump to conclusions and assume that this is going to be what we get. However, it might be what we get. And it's all we can really talk about. So let's talk about it. The next image I saw was kind of the straight on view, which doesn't look as bad. His arm hides most of the back kibble, but you definitely see those feet. And those feet look crazy. It looks like he stepped into the worst made sandwich ever and his foot got stuck in it. Like a hurricane and a tornado team up became pals and just decided to hang out on this dude's feet like his ankle is made of magnets and he went through a relaxing stroll through the scrapyard you got windows bent up in there you got tires bent up in there damn daniel what are those and that's all the big pop culture shoe references i have but it is unsightly but i'll tell you what bothers me more than the feet and it's not as obvious and it's not as glaring and it's not as unsightly when you look at the backpack and the feet but it's the face to me the face is probably the most important part it's what draws you into the figure and then you kind of start taking on the rest and i've often found that if a figure has a really great face sculpt it's really easy to forgive the rest of the figure i've also found that the figure has a really bad face sculpt it's really easy to dismiss the rest of the figure and neither of which are fair but both of which i think are just human nature but this dude's chin and throat looks like he has george lucas swag And while George Lucas is a hero of mine, his throat is a hero of no one's. This dude's throat is shaped like Falkhorn Leghorn's belly. He has the type of face that makes me think he could be a cashier at a Walmart. But the thing is, the larger issue for this is that it is cartoon accurate in a lot of ways. Not every cell, but in some cells. He does look like this. And this is getting back to a problem that I've been talking about recently that I know I've been experiencing and I think a few others have been experiencing as well is when you go back and you look at the animation, which I'm doing. I've been recently watching G1 over again. I still find a lot of the stories endearing and I still find a lot of the ways that they introduce characters, introduce themes and play patterns to be fascinating and still kind of hold up. 
my kids are actually enjoying it. But a lot of these bots look stupid with, in my case, a 38-year-old sensibility. Now, the thing about that is that you can mature these concepts and have them look interesting. And I don't mean getting away from G1. I know Pat Lee is a sensitive subject, but let's look at Cartoon Megatron for a second. And let's look at Pat Lee's art of Megatron. One, to me, seems to be more indicative of how I viewed the character as a kid. And this is the problem with absolute translations of cartoon character concepts that are really made for children. For us, which we loved, and that's fantastic. But it's not children that are buying masterpieces, it's, it's adults that were children and loved it when they were kids. Of course, some kids buy them before someone tells me how much their five-year-old adores the masterpiece line. But generally, that's not the target audience nor demographic for this line. And I think that they've had more luck when they've tried to strike a resemblance to the G1 while giving it more of an updated feel without straying too far, like say a classics line. I think some of their figures, like MP Soundwave, and MP Prowl are especially indicative of this approach. There's no doubt that they are the characters that you love from your childhood cartoon series. And most of us don't even realize, I think, how much they're off until we go back and look at the Sunbow designs and realize how much they're off. But do they look better than the Sunbow designs? This is the question I'm asking. And I think it's one we need to start asking ourselves regularly. Because otherwise, your option is this. Now, I know a lot of us weren't 100% satisfied with the MPB, but is this the improvement? I think the original MP B definitely does the feet better and I think they got the head better so to speak and since Dreamwave is so sensitive to some and upset so many people which I understand let's take a look at another example now as you all know I was never satisfied with the Transformers Devastation game I thought it was kind of the watered down lowest common denominator of a great video game which we got in the fall of Cybertron War for Cybertron however if we look at the design of Bumblebee I feel like this is a more mature more interesting, more masterpiece looking Bumblebee than the one that we're getting in this version 2.0. This looks like something that should be taken more seriously to me anyway. I feel like both the Dreamwave design and this design are superior to not only the Sunbow design, but especially this Takara Tomy masterpiece we're getting. I have to be honest in how this makes me feel. I have to be forthcoming in the approach that I think they're taking. How I view this in the landscape and how I view this is to me this seems like desperation. You're releasing your major two characters almost back to back. Optimus Prime is a cash cow. Bumblebee is a cash cow. And they're so close to one another. Now you throw this in the midst of all these plus versions, which is a whole different conversation that we probably should have. It started off with the red alert, which I thought was, eh, you know, I, I get this one. This is a whole different color scheme. But now they're just taking figures and painting them. It's the same approach that Fans Toys did with the Jetfire. And I didn't support that. And I'm not going to support a lot of this. I did get the red alert. But you know what? Had I known they were going to go boss to the wall with this method, I wouldn't have. We got a side swipe, we got a prowl, we got a blue streak coming, we got a wheeljack coming. People keep talking about the amount of G1 toys that they haven't gotten from Takara yet. And I'm here to tell you, I'm not sure what you're getting anymore. Because I'm not sure if they're interested in putting forth the resources into new molds to get new toys that aren't as popular as their big characters. I think it's much more likely at this point that you get a cartoon accurate repaint sound wave than it is that you'll get your trailbreaker. And I could be wrong. I have been known to be wrong from time to time. But I've also known to be right but i don't want to leave this discussion without saying some things that i do like about this and those things namely are i like the cartoon accurate car mode it looks like it's going to be pretty much fully painted and i do like this thing from a couple of angles i also like the use of light blue translucence so there are redeeming qualities to this i just certainly know it's not enough to switch mine out as it stands now this could be not the final form of this thing this could be a thrown together attempt to try to market it but if i took this at face value as being close close to the end result, not interested. I find it boring, a dull release on top of many other dull releases. But I guess Beast Wars stuff is coming, so there's that, but that's not for me. So I don't know, it seems like a strange play. To me, it seems like a desperate play. For those that are interested in it, I, I hope that he scratches every itch that you have. It's just not an itch that I'm interested in. Real quick while I have you, I will be doing a, if it teases the court next week at some point on a lot of the Toy Fair releases. So I know people have been interested in my thoughts on the Omega and Jetfire and all that. They're coming. I just want to wait and see what else they have to offer before I give my opinions on that. We got a busy week this week. Lots of videos coming. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.